Welcome back to Organize with Grace podcast. Do you feel like you're always struggling to get it together? Do you feel like you're burning the candle at both ends, feeling completely disorganized in your home and life, that it's starting to affect you mentally and emotionally? Well, you've come to the right place if you need encouragement, easy and simple organization tips, or you just want to know that you're not alone in this season of life. Hi, I'm Grace Ramon, your fellow working mom and professional organizer. I believe in you, friend. You can get it together. Now let's get organized. Hello, I am here to chat with my new friend, health and life coach, Desiree Robinson. Hi, Desiree. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Grace. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. So she is here because I wanted to ask her some questions about what she calls realistic minimalism. So before we get into that, Desiree, please tell us, tell myself and the audience about you and how you came upon minimalism. Yeah, well, I am a mom to two little kiddos, pretty young, actually, three and one, both boys. I'm married and a follower of Christ. I actually just really enjoy helping other people live a healthy lifestyle. It's something that I've been very passionate about, as well as just kind of being intentional in their life overall. And that's kind of where the realistic minimalism comes into hand. Um, I have quite a few interests like homesteading, you know, gardening, cooking from scratch, but I really try to focus on eliminating toxins and realistic minimalism, which I found out just about the idea of minimalism probably when I was like had a newborn with my first son. And honestly, I was trying to figure out just how to add another little kiddo into the mix. You know, it was so many more things to add onto the place already. My husband and I had all of our items and now we have to add a whole nother kid. And at that time we were in a one bedroom apartment And so it was like, okay, we got to figure this out. (laughs) And we had a dog. And so I started to kind of look into kind of how to organize things. And I really got mindful about how many clothes I had. I'd always kind of known I had a bunch of clothes and I didn't wear like half of them, honestly. And so I kind of started just looking around online for organization ideas. And I came up crossed a couple of people that were really instrumental in that. One of them is Sarah Therese, and she has a YouTube channel. And she actually just ended her YouTube channel, but left a bunch of her content up. uh, And she primarily shares on Instagram now. But she shares just a lot about minimalism in general. And whereas she's definitely more, I guess, minimalist than I am, um, it was still interesting to see someone that had more than nothing. (laughs) Like she, she had some stuff in there. I wouldn't, it wasn't exactly what I thought of, you know? And then also another person would be, um, Lisa Bass and she has a YouTube channel called farmhouse on Boone. And she actually shared mostly on like homesteading and cooking from scratch. And that was another area that I started to really get into cooking from scratch. And I was like, wow, I am bulking up on all of these items and I don't have space for it in my kitchen. So I'm like, I need to be, you know, more intentional about what I'm actually storing in my kitchen. And she just kind of had this minimalist, kind of easier approach to life in general, but with cooking. So like cooking clothes and having a kid is really what entered me into focusing on minimalist living in general. Nice, nice. And before that, did you have any misconceptions um, about minimalism? And then let us know about those misconceptions. And then how do you see it today? Yeah, I definitely had some unrealistic ideas about minimalist living, for sure. Um, I kind of thought of 
your typical like single man that had nothing like that was the only person <laughs> that could be minimal honestly like they just you know have a laptop and their couch and their bed and I don't know they come home they go to work hang out with friends come back that's it and just yeah the idea that you honestly owned nothing or mm. the concept that you were just naturally this way. I've met people to where they do have less things. Maybe it's not nothing, but they're just like, oh, I just, I don't know. I just have my few things and that's how I work. I, you know, I work fine with just four pairs of shoes and that's just how I've always been. There is absolutely no effort to it. And so I started to develop another thought of, oh, well, if you're minimal, then you have like a certain number of things like, mm -hmm or you are just naturally that way. And that's how you're able to have only four pairs of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so today I'm more so after like talking with a lot of people and honestly looking up a lot about just how people live a minimalist lifestyle, but especially with kids. Cause that was my biggest hang up. I'm like, how do you have kids right. and be minimal like it just doesn't seem or you know be a homesteader like I am and gardening or you know cooking from scratch it just seemed so unrealistic but as I learned more and more and saw more of what people were doing I more so realized it was just about being intentional about what you have if you're actually using it you know, actually taking the time to sit there and be mindful, think about, okay, do I use this? No. Do I enjoy this? Yes. Is it broken? Do you know how many things we hold on to that are just yeah. broken? Oh, I'll get to that. And it's been a year. <laughs> like, I, I definitely was a clutter bug in the past. And it's something that I still struggle with. I naturally kind of want to just kind of hoard things, I guess. Like, yeah. and I don't mean to say hoard in the sense, because whenever I think of hoard, I think of, you know, you see those TV shows. Of like hoarders. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I wasn't ever that bad. But you know, overall, I still, I, I held on to things a lot. And I mean, and I we, wrote, do. we do have those. I think we all have those types of qualities in us, you know, and tendencies, right? Like a or hoarding tendency. But with, you know, with realistic min minimalism, I I'd love to know more about that, about that concept. Is it something that you, I guess, like, I really like the play on words. And I think realistic minimal minimalism um, is something that um, I'm like, ah, oh, realistic. I like that. But what, is, what does that consist of, Desiree? Yeah, realistic. It's just honestly making sure that you're being intentional about yeah. what you have, which mm -hmm. in turn to me means actually, you know, like I was saying, you know, paying yeah. attention thinking it through paying instead of yeah. just um, buying something and bringing it home, actually like stopping. Impulsively. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like you I used to do, I used to do that. <laughs> and sometimes I, I kind of get to that, you know, point, but right. So impulsive <laughs> versus mindful. I yeah, guess, right? definitely. Cause it's so easy to just go out and be like, yeah, I, I could use that. That looks, you know, fun or pretty. And then if you actually stop to think, well, Am I really going to use that and think it through for a moment? You know, conscious buying, conscious consumerism, that's a really big movement that I totally support. And, you know, if you're just intentional about how you're living in all aspects of your life, you're going to focus on, okay, like, what is actually going to work for me? What am I actually going to use? And another aspect to realistic minimalism, it's not just being conscious of, you know, what we're buying and intentional, but also of the things we already have in our home or honestly, even just like our mindset. It doesn't have to be just, you know, the things that we're buying or putting around us. It's also how we're, you know, spending our time or cluttering up our phones. So it's also being mindful of how you are, you know, spending your time. It's also all the things, your electronics are clutter too. We don't realize digital clutter, like of re really where realistic truly boils down to is 
it's going to look different for everybody. God created us differently. And that is a blessing. Life would be so boring if we were all the same. And what works for me is going to look different for you and for somebody else. And that is totally fine. So it's just realistically looking at what works for you. Is there value for you? Is it serving a purpose? Is it functional? For example, I'll take functional over aesthetics any day, but other people might take aesthetics over functional and that is totally fine. You know, you know, that might look like, you know, you need a certain amount of shoes. We were talking about shoes earlier. So maybe somebody that is working out that works in an office and likes to go out and dance, they're going to have like three different pairs of shoes for that. When I'm over here, like I'm in the garden and I kind of just go and like, I need flip flops, a pair of tennis shoes and a pair of boots. And I'm set. Now I still have backups because I'm comfortable with that. So I don't have just three pairs of shoes. I honestly have more like eight and I'm okay with that number, even though it's a little more than I actually use. I'm kind of like, well, I have it. So when these go out, I'm going to go ahead and use these, you know, once those shoes are done with. And I'm okay with holding on to that. Somebody else might not be and they might just donate it. Yeah. And I love how you said I'm okay with that because you're right. It really gets us out of the comparison. You know, I call it maybe somebody had already coined this phrase, but comparisonitis when it comes to like, okay, well, you know, you have more shoe pairs of shoes than I do or less pairs of shoes, but it it's really knowing what you want, right? And who you are um when it comes to making these decisions about um what to what to keep and what to let go of. Yeah, what realistically yeah. works for you, works in your life, just be intentional about that. And that right there is realistic minimalism. Yeah, and that was my that was my um question next is, um, what would you give, what advice would you give to working moms who feel that minimalism is unattainable for them? Yeah. You know, I understand that I work from home and honestly, I didn't work out of the house much. I do a little bit out of the house, but I didn't do much out of the house before, I came across the idea of minimalism, but I think really focusing on just one step at a time that it's a lifestyle that you're going to create over time, that also it's a beautiful gift to, you know, give to yourself to not have that, you know, scarcity mindset of needing all the things, but to really just trust that God is going to provide. And you can pass that gift down to your kids too, because, you know, it's totally hard doing this with kids, but it's still doable as well. And, you know, find some help, like whether it's organizing, you know, with you providing somebody with organizing services or a course, like I actually create a course on helping people with decluttering and you can find just like ways to make it fun too. You know, whether that's, I don't know, when you want to figure out like, okay, what am I going to do with all the clothes that I have? Well, I'm going to go ahead and go through them and I'm going to throw on some music and enjoy this couple hours that I put in. And I'm going to actually think about these items I have filling up my closet that's overflowing, you know? So just, just take it one step at a time. It's going to definitely work itself out and you'll figure out what that realistic minimalist lifestyle looks for you. And it doesn't have to be a certain number of items or a small amount of items even. Yeah. Yeah. And what does it like look like in the day in the life of mom with two littles and, and minimalism? Can you tell us more about what that looks like with your, with your days, with your kiddos? Yeah. You know, one thing I always think about is the image of a kid going to a toy bin or going to their room of toys and just grabbing all the toys and throwing them out just to find like that one to three few toys they actually (laughs) like. (laughs) That right there was a big one for me. Like we really need to not only practice this realistic minimalist lifestyle for ourselves, but also for our kids, because 
look at all those 30 toys they just threw out that they really don't really care about. Maybe you could have 10. And, you know, I really like focusing on toy bins to help with organizing all the kids stuff. Um, and something kind of different I do is I actually rotate toys. And now I'm not always the best at it, but I try to do it as much as I can. And I will take some toys out and put them in a separate toy bin or have certain toy bin toys that are only for when I'm playing with the kids and then certain ones that are free access for the kids. And it helps keep things cleaner. Oh my goodness. It helps clean up the house at the end of the day. You're not picking up a hundred toys at the end of the day. It's maybe just, you know, 30. You you gather it together and they know to dump it in their toy bin or after, you know, the individual ones that you're playing with them with, you can go ahead and gather that together and put it back. And so toy bin organization has been a major win for me with kids and you know really paying attention to if a toy or a clothing item is honestly broken or you know ripped to move forward and let go of it It, it's really easy to hold on to I actually just had to throw out a pair of ripped pants and I was like "Eh, he's a kid who cares if it's a little (laughs) ripped I was like you know what we have plenty of pants I don't need to keep around a ripped pair of pants so you just get rid of it you know yeah, I started to do that as well with um with both actually with clothes and toys um because one how you're right how many toys can they really play with not even in an hour or yeah. a day you know how many toys can they and how many clothes can they wear that and especially the ones that no longer fit you know like we have to ask ourselves like why do we keep them um in the drawers if if he's not going to wear them anymore. And then, so I started to really be, um, you know, the words that you've been using, it's so interesting. And I used to be like, Oh, mindful, whatever. But it's really, it really works when you say, I need to be mindful. I need to ask myself questions. And I started to ask myself questions. Well, with my stuff, my kiddo, he's I mean, he's growing like a weed, but for me, I can just easily say at, you know, go to the store and ask myself, am I really going to wear this? Like, really, am I, do I really like this? You know, and kind of, if I'm second guessing, it's probably, I I probably shouldn't purchase it at that moment. I mean, just think about it. It's going to just take up more space in your closet, which in turn is going to, let's say if you wear it super rarely, if at all, but if you do wear it, then that's just more laundry to do (laughs) and more work on yourself. And then let's say you don't wear it and I don't know, you're looking for your next house and you think you need a house that has a huge closet because you have a bunch of clothes and it turns out you don't wear half of them like me because I've had, I have really had a process of going through my clothes. I don't understand how I keep getting rid of so many clothes. (laughs) I am like, I just got rid of two trash bag full of clothes. I feel like I get rid of that yearly. And I only buy maybe five to 10 new things a year, if that. Yeah. And so I'm like, how oh, do I still have all these? <laughs> we just do. We just accumulate. But we have to. Yeah, but it's a yes. It's a process, and we just have to continue to continue to move them on. And and there are times that you know I did mention this in one of my um, podcast episodes that sometimes we go through transitions. You know, like we go through a transition, life transition, and we do get feel that overwhelm, and we do need a little bit of help. You know from um, from a course or from um, an organizer or from a friend, whatever it may be, it's okay, you know, it's okay to ask for for help. And speaking of, I know that you also have a podcast. Can you tell us more about your podcast, Desiree? Yeah, of course. So I kind of mentioned earlier how I really just primarily like to share about helping people with eliminating toxins and realistic minimalism. And so my podcast is really surrounded around that and really helping moms, serving moms, because I see my work as my ministry. And I just had so much 
company, um, listening to podcasts, I still do honestly at home with little ones, just listening to podcasts. It just gives you that sort of adult company that you're really I love craving. podcast myself. I think we love it so much that we created our own, right? It was a huge reason. Yeah, I wanted to be able to be that for somebody. And I'm like, hey, maybe I'll make some friends along the way. So good. And look like, who we you. have. Yeah, it's so cool. And, you know, you just feel so alone at home and it doesn't have to be that way. And I'm all for, you know, I didn't know something until somebody shared it with me. And so if I can provide that for someone, then I'm happy to. Awesome. And what is the title of your podcast? And how can my listeners best connect with you? Yeah, the name of my podcast is Unprocessed Mama Intentional Lifestyle. And you can find me at unprocessedmama.info. And I'm really most active on Instagram. And you can find me, it's at Unprocessed Mama Desiree. And I will send over those links so you can add that into the show notes. So it's just easy for people. <laughs> we all like that easy click. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely do that. Well, thank you, Desiree, for your time here with us and for sharing your, you know, a little bit of your life and how you came upon minimalism. And I really appreciate what you've shared. Of course. Thank you for having me. It was fun chatting about it. And I hope it can help other moms out there. Hey, real quick, if you enjoyed today's episode, the best way to thank me is by leaving an iTunes review. If you're listening to me right now on your iPhone, simply scroll down, click write a review within the podcast, and voila, you'll get a chance to click five stars and type in how the podcast has helped you. You can also access iTunes on your computer if you're not an iPhone user by downloading the iTunes app. Also, I offer virtual organizing, and that means we get to hop on Zoom together wherever you are, and I can help you organize your space for a fraction of a price that you would spend hiring an in-person organizer. Contact me by email, hello at organizewithgrace.com, so you and I can get started. I offer a free 15-minute assessment to see if we're a good match to work together. So get on it, girl! Stop being stuck on your organizing journey. I'll help you walk forward so you can finish that organizing project that you've been procrastinating on. No judgment here. Done it myself. But you know what I'm talking about, girl. All right. Can't wait to talk to you. Bye.